I've always thought the mornings are the most important part of the day. It's a chance to set yourself up and get yourself in the right headspace. To do that, I'm currently in a process of doing a 15 minute stretching exercise, a 15 minute meditation practice, and a big coffee to kick off the day. But probably the best change that I've made is not touching my phone until at least seven o'clock in the morning, giving that first hour to myself to do whatever I wish and not have the noise of the outside world affecting me. And the reason why I wanted to take you through all of that is because at the end of this video today, I'm gonna to show you the one simple trick that I've done that allows me to stay super efficient. It allows me to really make the most of my days and my time and to really kind of not miss a beat. So if you wanna get a little bit more productive and a little bit more better with, I guess, time management, hopefully that tool a little bit later on in the video will help you guys out. But welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. It is yet another Tuesday vlog. I'm very much looking forward to diving into what is gonna be a pretty big day. We're gonna go and grab the sales like we always do. We're gonna go and do some listings and then we're gonna go out and do some thrifting. Things just simply don't change. Um, but I have a lot of fun doing this and I do enjoy making these Tuesday videos. So smash the like button for me for the big day ahead and um, let's get into what is hopefully gonna be a really cool vlog. All right, I've been able to sell these Timberland snow boots as well. These are a really cool grab. They're a waterproof pair of women's snow boots and uh, I ended up paying $15 for them in the thrift and they've gone on to sell for $49 and 99 cents. So look, I really think given the condition on these, they're in excellent condition. I probably could have got a few more dollars for them, but they did sit up on my eBay store for quite a while. So for that reason, I took the offer at 49.99 um, to get them out the door again. But um, look, good item, great time of year to be selling this sort of thing. If you do find them in the thrift, anywhere between sort of 10 to $15, you'll generally go okay. But um, a cool pair of boots uh, in great condition and um, yeah, another sale made. And I was also able to sell a board game. Now, this board game was purchased right back when I very first started thrifting. And to be honest, I don't do too many board games nowadays. Um, this was Trivial Pursuit, uh, a very common game that you often find in the thrift. Uh, this box is a little bit beat up, no doubt about it. I think I only paid maybe $5 for this one on memory. Um, it sold for 25 bucks. So look, with the board games, the reason why I'm not buying them uh, moving forward is the fact that when they're used, you can never guarantee if every single piece is in the box. I've triple checked this one and I believe it is a full set. It did say complete when I bought the item in the thrift. So that's why it gave me confidence at the time to buy it. But just moving forward, I just don't want to run that risk of having a piece, a piece missing um, and running into issues down the line. So I'll only buy board games when they're brand new and sealed. Uh, I've only got a few more that are used that I bought a few months ago to get rid of. $25, this isn't gonna make me much, but I'm very happy to just get it out the door. Now, you guys watching the trips to the thrift videos might have remembered uh, just last Thursday, I picked up the Merrill uh, hiking shoes. So I've ended up getting a pretty good result here. They've ended up selling in a pretty quick space of time. So yeah, here they are. Do you remember these guys from Thursday's video? Well, they've ended up selling for $79.95. So I got my full $80 asking price, which I'm absolutely stoked about. As you can see, they're pretty much in light new condition. The brand Merrill is such a good one to be looking out for if you can find it. Uh, these are a really cool pair of hiking shoes. Um, yeah, $79.95. I bought them for $25 from memory uh, in that video. So to be able to sell these for 80 bucks, I've ended up making myself about a $35 profit which is what I like to get with my shoes. So that one was a good one. Awesome to get the job done there. Merrill guys, great brand, sells really fast. And there you have it guys. I wish I had a few more items to show you, but we just had the three sales come through yesterday. So a very, very quiet day on eBay, that's for sure. $155 worth of total revenue. Uh, I always do $300 a day on average. So again, I really wish these Tuesday vlogs could provide more sold items, but uh, Unfortunately, we are just working on the three today. So we'll get these off into the post tomorrow. Uh, I've made myself probably about an $80 to $90 profit overall after fees and post. 
So two really fast tips for you with regards to my listing process. So I always look my items out the night before and I think that's a great way to go about making sure you actually get the job done each day. If you look it out the night before, you put it on your bench, you wake up in the morning, you just know what you've got to go and do. So I'm always doing that. These are the items that I've looked out from the night before and that process really does help me. The second one is I always make sure I'm listing the same type of item. I find that my listing time is always a hell of a lot more efficient when I'm listing the same sort of thing. So today we're doing shirts. I hate shirts. I don't I no longer buy shirts for this reason that it takes a little bit longer to list. But considering I have bought them in the past, I do need to make sure that they get up onto eBay. So um, just listing the same sort of thing. It just helps the process, speeds up the process. You get into a bit of a rhythm uh, rather than doing different categories, shoes, books, DVDs, clothes. It would just take a whole lot longer. Your brain's having to think about a whole lot more things than the same rhythmic process of list listing the same items. So two really quick tips. I've got these to do now. We'll see you after. Oh, that is awesome. A pair of New Balance shoes. So this was part of the um, the morning process, my daily checks that I do. I, I always send out my offers now in the morning, so I'm not having to do it throughout the day. And uh, I've just had one come straight back that accepted at $39.99 for a pair of New Balance running shoes. Shoes, guys, I sell so many of them. This isn't a one that's going to make me a massive profit. $39.99 of the sale price isn't huge. Um, but I only bought these for about $5. So I'm making about a $17 or $18 profit on this one. Um, and considering the sales were slow yesterday, a quick early morning sale, fingers crossed today could be a really good result with a couple of sales coming through. I really want to get these listings on so that, that can start to generate the algorithm. Fingers crossed we can get a few pop up throughout the day. All right, guys, so my 10 listings are done. We've got a Rhodes and Beckett uh, shirt. I've actually got two of those. There was another one, I think, tucked in here. I just want to show you that really quickly. Um, this is a good brand, guys. I've only seen this a couple of times now, but there it is, Rhodes and Beckett. 100% uh, two-ply Egyptian super cotton. My goodness. So really good start today, guys. While I was doing my listings, I had four sales come through and uh, the Guinness Book of World Records 2019 has finally sold. This one sold for $27.50. So to make a $20 sale on a book I paid about $2 for in the thrift a couple of months ago, I thought that was a great little get there. Uh, two pairs in the end of New Balance shoes. I spoke of the first one for $39.99. I ended up picking those out uh, before I've gotten the car here. And uh, the other pair was another pair of plain black New Balance shoes that sold for $49.99. So there was nothing fancy about these. These were just a plain pl uh, plain black New Balance pair of running shoes that you often see when you're in the thrift. And uh, yeah, to get them done for 50 bucks, I thought it was cool. And uh, another one as well that's been sitting in my cupboard for that long, it was this PE Nation jumper, size small. And uh, I thought that was, in, I thought it would have sold so long ago, to be honest with you. But to finally sell it for $55, uh, pretty happy with that too. So four sales, about $170 worth of sales so far this morning, and it's only 10.30. And the first thing that I like to do when I make a couple of sales is to go out and thrift some more items. So we're gonna go and do that now. All right, guys, we have pulled up at the first thrift store, and I'm very, very excited after a few sales that we've had to get back in and start spending that money on some new stock. Um, look, guys, I did want to just quickly mention, I'm going to probably phase out of selling books. I think I've touched on it on this channel in the past, but I'm just, I'm really, I'm, I'm just bored of selling books, to be honest with you. Um, so I won't be looking for that today. I will be looking for shoes. I will be looking for clothing and I will be looking for DVDs and video games. Um, but I did want to have a chat about that. When you are beginning your reselling journey, I think it's really good to focus on literally everything, anything you think you can make a dollar on. Um, definitely grab it and just experiment with it and just play with it. Um, sort of as you go on though, I think you'll get um, probably in a position of wanting to focus on a couple of things. And I think it's really important that you maybe pick three or four categories and then really just start to hone your thrift store focusing on just those areas. Um, you'll get to know them really well. You'll get to know the price points, all the different variations to those categories. And I think it'll go a long way to improving your sales overall. So um, maybe a hyper-focus around a few categories could be a great way to go about it if you're that inter uh, intermediate type seller. Um, if you're a beginner reseller, just as I did when I first started, just literally just try and buy everything that you think you can make some money on. But um, we've pulled up now and uh, let's go in and we'll see what we can find.
Oh, I tell you what, guys, it is good to be back in the thrift. I've been able to find these Salomon Wings Pro men's trail running shoes. Guys, these are an excellent brand uh, and definitely a clean pair of shoes here. I paid $12. Definitely think I'll be able to push 70 bucks for them. But how's this? A pair of Adidas shoes right next to it for $35. How is the pricing difference on those two? Also found this Von Zipper brand new with tags. Uh, hang loose tee, very much right up my alley. This one's a size large. It's only $8, pale blue. Thanks very much. I'll take that away with me. I've also found this green, uh, brand new with tags, Von Zipper tee as well. This is a size medium, $8 tag on it. I've taken that one as well. Sacconi women's windbreaker jacket. I don't mind this one. It's a running vest. I haven't bought too many of these sort of items before, but I'm going to take the punt, guys. Going to aim for about 35 bucks on this one. A very cool piece and always good to try something new. This was the greatest t-shirt I have ever found, guys. Honor the gift. This is Russell Westbrook, my favorite NBA player. This is his clothing range over in the United States, and here I am in Australia, finding it in the thrift for 10 bucks. Guys, these t-shirts go for about 80 to $100, even in pre-owned condition. Just an unbelievable grab. There you go, guys. First op shop run of the day down. We have six items. We have spent $48, and I'm ready to dive into the second run and see how we can go. I'm, I'm going to be looking for shoes, and the first pair of shoes I've been able to find here are the Nike Dual Fusion 3 women's running shoes. These are a pair of US size 9. They are in actually excellent condition. Have a look at the soles on them. The soles are in very good nick. Now I've only paid $8 for these. I've sold a pair of these before. I'm going to be pushing for $45. And then the Asics GT 2000 men's running shoes. These are a size uh, US 9 as well. The soles are a little bit worn, but there are no tears in the fabric. So I'm still going to try and push about 40 bucks for these. A very, very good pair of shoes. Also found this uh, uh, Puma windbreaker jacket as well. This was a size large, I believe. Um, only paid the $4 for it, guys. A very, very cool piece. Really like the colorway on this one. And uh, yeah, when I saw it for 4 bucks, I had to grab it. Nike Tiempo X. Uh, these are a pair of indoor soccer shoes. These still go on to sell for about $50. So I'm picking this one up for $15. Not going to be a huge profit, but just thought I'd grab it based on the quality. And then I also found this gold and black pair of Nike indoor soccer shoes as well. Paid a little bit less, $10. We'll probably sell it for a little bit less as well. All right, guys, so far so good. Three out of four stops complete. We've spent $88 so far, and I really want to get over the ton. So I'm going to do one more, and uh, then we'll get off and have some lunch. It's been a good run so far, guys. Let's finish it strong. I've got this uh, really nice women's jumper here. This is a full zip. Have a look at that Asia size double XL. This is actually a standard size large, um, but a really cool piece here. $10, even the embroidery on the back. My goodness, I'll be taking that with me. Uh, also found this Tommy Bahama pair of 55% linen shorts. Uh, always going to grab this. The brand and the fact that it is linen uh, told me that I was going to be making some money when I put it on eBay. I'll be shooting for about 35 bucks. I've only paid $4 in the thrift. How about that? Two really nice pieces of clothing to start off this run. And then another one that I've been able to find is Netty. I've sold a little bit of Netty before. This is a really good cycling brand. Um, so I have ended up picking this one up. Uh, there was only, I think, a $3 tag. Let's have a look in here. I can't exactly remember. I think this was $3. Um, yeah, oh, come on, Matt, come on. Okay, yep, three bucks. Um, so yeah, look, I'll sell these for about $35 to $40. No dramas at all. They were pretty much in like new condition. Well, guys, there you go. Three op shops, all done. Spent $105 in that run, and I've got 14, I believe, really great items that will go on to make some great money on eBay. But I am also really conscious of the fact that I know a lot of you guys are just part-time resellers, casual resellers. You might only be able to do this sort of a trip for an hour and a half once a week. That might be the only opportunity you get. And that's fine. That's exactly all you should be doing if you are casual or part-time. If, for instance, you had just gone out and done this, you were working a nine-to-five job as well, the process that I would go through to have these listed up onto eBay would be to try and do it over three days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And what I mean by that is I would do four, four, and four. That would equal 12. If you had 14 items, I would do four, five, and five. And then from there, you're having two listings go live on that day. And then the very next day, you're scheduling two listings to go up. 
on Wednesday, you would have five listings to do. You would have two that go up that day and then three that go up the next day. And I would do that throughout the week until you come to Sunday and you're ready to go out and source for new items again. So it's really important that you have new listings going into your eBay account every single day. It's a great way to build consistency with your sales and help out with the algorithm. So with an, a process like this of sourcing these sort of items on limited time, I would literally try and get around 10 to 15 items every single week. And then make sure you've got at least two items going up on your eBay store every single day. That hopefully guarantees yourself at least potentially a sale a day. And you might end up with five or six sales to end the week. And if you're part-time, five or six sales could be 100 or 200, 300, maybe even dollars. So there's a good way to go about it rather than going and pumping it all out on the same day. Have it drip feed out and consistently list over a few days. But for now, guys, I'm hungry. Let's go and eat. had a few sales while I was out as well, guys. Uh, Curious George, I paid a dollar each for these in the thrift and we've been able to sell them as a bundled lot for 20 bucks. So not too bad, guys. DVDs, selling them in bundles like this. These are brand new and sealed, so you're always gonna get a few more. Pretty happy with that. Also had a Nintendo Wii console bundle sell as well. So had this one hiding up here for quite a while. This one has the manual, uh, has five games and uh, Everything else, all cables, sensor bar, console, and uh, it's sold for $80. So with the uh, Curious George DVDs and this, that's 100 bucks. And we also had one more, which was a pair of board shorts. And they should just be right here. Here they are here, Rivka, Ruka. I always sell this brand, guys. Goes on to go well for me every single time. This one's a size medium and... Uh, Believe it or not, even in the winter time over here in Australia, the board shorts are still selling. Been able to sell this one for twenty-two dollars. So when you take out postage, that is a fifteen-dollar sale. Um, so yeah, three more sales, guys. That brings us up to I think it's ten throughout the day now. And finally, guys, the last thing that I wanted to take you through as well was um, how I'm basically trying to be a little bit more efficient and accountable with my time on not only a daily, but a weekly basis. This is an everyday thing. If you slip for a moment, you're going to fall behind. So you've got to make sure that you're always on top of things, always making sure that you are the most efficient with what you're doing. Now, for me, I've always written out, and you might have seen even in my past vlog videos that I've done, I've always done handwritten notes around top five tasks that I must do throughout the day. Well, I've gone a little bit further on that over the last couple of weeks. I've actually created an Excel document on what is a weekly plan. It's funny, I work a nine to five job and I have all this structure in my life. And then as soon as I want to get away from that and work for myself, I go looking for that structure again. I try and create structure. Um, even though I don't necessarily need to have it in place. There's no boss, there's no clock in, clock out with what I do, but I wanna try and create that somehow. So I've gone ahead and I've done that with this template. So I'll pull it up and I'll give you a bit of a look at it and it might help you get a little bit more efficient, um, get a little bit more, I guess, productive with your time so you're not wasting time and you're also not putting things off. Um, it's, it's literally a very basic template off Excel that you can get just by downloading or having Excel on your laptop and going in and um, and selecting this sort of day planner or day schedule. So I've just filled it out and color coordinated things to, to give you a bit of a representation of how my week looks as a full-time reseller. Um, if you're doing this casually or part-time, you might be blocking out, you know, nine to five might be blocked out completely for work. And then you might have your reseller stuff positioned in the morning and maybe at night time. But for me, I've got, as you can see here, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays are blocked out for video days heavy days that finish at about seven o'clock at night. And then I'm really trying to make sure I'm doing my morning routine and my daily checks, doing my end release strategy every single morning. And then I'm either doing, I'm doing the most, the number one thing that I need to do is either list my items or do the post, depending on what day it is. So I always prioritize that to be the first thing that I do. So you'll see here on a Monday, I'm doing the post for the first part of the day. And then from there, all of my listings happen generally on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday in the afternoon. So you'll see Friday Ave and Monday Ave, 
And then I've got to do my tax. So I've left that for Wednesday afternoon and I'm going to do my listings tomorrow morning. But um, generally, it's doing the most priority task first. And then from there, I, I try and obviously have my lunch um, around 11.30 or my first meal of the day. Uh, I do always try and go to the gym and uh, I try and do a second session and do a double session worth of exercise Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So key characteristics over here are my sort of my goals that I've got in place for the week and must do each day is I, I really don't want to check my phone until seven o'clock uh, in the morning. I also want to make sure that I'm doing my stretching, my meditating um, every single morning that I, I showed you guys at the start of this video. I want to make sure that I'm eating healthy and I'm drinking that three liters worth of water, um, 16 hour fast as well, eating at 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And uh, also lights out at 9.30, so I'm getting my eight hours worth of sleep. So that is a must. I have to do that each and every day. And then I've got my weekly goals. Uh, I need to be putting out um, seven workout sessions in every single week, publish three videos and list at least minimum 70 items onto my eBay store. So some weekly tasks in there. And then an overall look, it's about a 60-hour work week. But for me, guys, that is a honest snapshot on how my week looks every single week. It's Groundhog Day. I just do this every single week. And by having it written out, I'm just more of a chance of getting it done and, and not skipping out. An example of this would be what happened yesterday. I've injured my foot running. And um, having injured my foot, I was a bit unsure about my second session of the week being a running session uh, yesterday afternoon. And as a result of that, I actually swapped it and I went for a swim. Now, if I didn't have that written down in my Excel spreadsheet, I would not have gone for a swim. I can guarantee you now, it would just be in my head as an idea and I would probably just go and pass on it and know that I went to the gym at lunch and that's all I needed to do. But I knew in the back of my mind that I'd written down, I had written down somewhere in my spreadsheet that in the afternoon on Monday, I was to go for a run and I really wanted to make sure I got that second session in. So I've written that down and then sure enough, you know, come Monday afternoon, even with a bad foot, I'm out on the pool doing a 1K swim. So it really does work. I think if you guys have got a really busy schedule, which no doubt if you're trying to do eBay as a side hustle, you will have a really busy schedule. This is a great way to make sure that you actually get things done because not only can you prioritize your time most effectively by writing it down ahead of time, but when the time comes, you'll actually get on to doing it. And um, I've done this for the last two weeks and so far I've never missed a session. Hey guys, we have just had another two sales come through on the eBay store. Unreal stuff. Super Mario Brothers, first to sell, volumes one and two, $19.95. Very much like the Curious George DVDs, bundling up, selling them for $10 a piece. Take off postage, you're making yourself about $10. Not too bad. And then the Melbourne Rebels Rugby Union jersey has sold for full asking price of $37.95. Wanted to sell it for 30 bucks. Got my turnaround, only paid $5 for it in the thrift. Again, another fantastic result. So guys, since I started recording this vlog at seven o'clock this morning, we have had nine sales come through and currently it's only 2.30 in the afternoon. So $381 worth of revenue in what is probably about seven hours. So it's been a really, really good day and fingers crossed with the afternoon and the evening still to come, this can be over a $500 day on eBay, which would just be incredible. Um, appreciate you tuning in, guys. We're going to end the video right there. I'm going to jump over and start editing this video and getting it across to you, hopefully, this afternoon. Maybe, actually, probably this evening. But um, let me know if you got anything out of the video today. Let me know what you learnt the most. And uh, do let me know of some video ideas that I can be doing in the weeks and the months to come. I'm always looking for video ideas. So thank you very much for that. Um, look forward to catching you in the next video, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you're still here now, you are part of the 30% Club, and I do very much appreciate it. Uh, look forward to catching you in the next video, guys. We'll see you soon.